Hello YouTube, welcome back to the channel. So we're gonna make one of these little kind of uh, StreamYard recording videos. We'll do that so we can do a little screen share thing. I was uh, kind of sitting back while letting things play out. Uh, this did start off and happen a little bit during the Friday live stream. We did have a little bit of this going on as far as discussion on it, but it was very brief, only because uh, we didn't really have too much background and also I really hadn't been paying too close attention. So just to be clear on this, I had only been peripherally paying attention to the whole Starstock thing as it was going on, but obviously on Friday it started to kind of pick up some steam. And then we've had a little bit of more going on since then, where uh, Dakota at Sports Card Anonymous did an interview with the CEO of Scar uh, Starstock. So he was able to give a little bit more information. So I'm going to talk about that and give a few initial, few basic thoughts. And then, of course, as the week goes on, we can always elaborate on that more on the live stream on Friday. But just as a starting point, just a little background, because like I said, I hadn't paid too much attention to Starstock. And part of the reason for that is because I looked at it, and when the, when the model was kind of explained to me and I was kind of looking at it peripherally, they were focused a lot on rookie cards and things like that. It was designed to be like a marketplace where you could do like instantaneous trades, kind of like an open market. In a certain way, it kind of reminded me of quite a bit of ComC. Now, at the time, ComC was having its struggles. So I said, okay, well, we'll see what happens with this because um, certainly there's room in the marketplace for somebody else to try to compete in that space. But the biggest differentiator between the two was that Starstock, of course, had the grading component of it where you could submit something in, potentially then turn it over and get it graded by one of the third-party graders. But then in addition to that, they would do like a pre-grading. So you get like a Starstock A, Starstock B, and that was supposed to be like um, almost like a Beckett car Raw card review. Same kind of concept in terms of figuring out what cards might be suitable for grading or sell on the platform as a Raw card with one of these grade designations where you could earn a premium for getting a star stock a so that was just another kind of a value add and initially they came in with the idea of providing a lot of this stuff for free which i could see being very appealing but uh, like i said um whereas comp had had a lot of struggles at that moment as they got struck with covid very early and it's became kind of a reoccurring problem that i discussed quite a bit on the live stream and had some fun with to be honest with you here was star stock offering an alternative that could uh, potentially you know take a little bit of market share but one sticking point element that i always had even back then during the live stream discussions of it that kind of made me sit back and just kind of sit back and observe is that again their focus was predominantly on rookie cards for the longest time and in addition uh if you were to buy something let's like a star stock a you couldn't select which one in the pile so to speak if they had multiples you would get one from the pile so it's one of those things where the idea was it was a consistently trading platform so you weren't buying a specific card you were buying a card that fell under a certain bucket or a certain category and at the time, as you know, as you were going into 2021, uh, Starstock was able to successfully secure quite a bit of financing. So I'll quickly share. And again, anything I share with you will be included as a link in the description. So as always, just to make sure that we're all on the same page so that we have access to that information. So this is from Sports Collectors Daily. This was all the way back in April of 2021. Starstock received an $8 million investment at the time. And it was from a group uh, of different investors that included Trey Young, Twitch co-founder Justin Kahn, uh, Chief Operating Officer of Bet MGM, Ryan Spoon, and a variety of other folks. And that's after they had received an initial investment uh, from another investment group that included Kevin Durant. So they had received almost $10 million in total funding by this point uh, back in April of 2021. So they'd been receiving this money. And the idea was to they were going to use it to build up their infrastructure, to hire more people, and to build up their mobile app, in addition to other things. And again, it's all included in the article here briefly outlined. And I will include a link to that in the description. You can check that out for yourself. Now, moving ahead, this is Twitter. And on this, uh, on the 28th, which feels like forever ago now, but it was only Friday, Starstock announced that as of today, they were suspending all raw card grading submissions temporarily. All graded cards and wax will still be accepted if you have any submissions missions on route or postmark before today will hold and ship back at no cost please contact support with any questions this led to immediate speculation and uh, i'll scroll through and show you a couple of specific examples on this twitter thread and this would then lead you to consider why then it would make a lot of sense for the ceo to try to get out there a different message and be able to kind of retort some of the rumors that almost immediately came about as a result of that now scrolling down if you could look here an example of it was this why are all the breaks and auctions closed too because they did actually cancel a break with psa and they say they're excited to work with PSA in the near future. Now, this is part of what led into people questioning about in terms of their uh, submission, because obviously in the wake of the Marks cards and a lot of the group submission, you know, questions that people are bringing up, Starstock, in effect, was a group submitter with them. And that, of course, created some additional questions and leads to rumors and innuendo. But I'll give you an example of, so here they say we have some staffing issues, which again leads to more rumor mongering and all that. We'll be live next week. Everything is okay, which of course isn't gonna quell any uh, rumors. But then following up with that, your submissions will be completed as normal and scrolling down if you take a look further you come up with stuff like if you declare bankruptcy will i get my card shipped back to me so it's quite a leap you know this is escalating very quickly if you look at it um and you can see exactly that kind of rumors is almost immediately what's going to lead uh starstock to look and reassess how they uh follow up with this 
because you can reassure people all you want on Twitter. It's going to be very difficult to uh, to convince people once they've got it in their head that something's going on. Now, all this leads us to today. And today is where Dakota, Sports Card Anonymous. And again, I'll leave a link to this video. I do strongly suggest if you are interested in this to check out the video in its entirety. It's under 20 minutes. It's 19 minutes and seven seconds. So it's not too bad. It was a very short conversation, all things considered, but they were able to cover some ground. And Scott Greenberg of CEO, their CEO of Starstock, did address a lot of the different rumors and touch on certain elements of it. Now I'm going to play you a little brief snippet, just a little bit, just so that you can get a taste of one specific thing. And then I'll come back out and comment and just give my general thoughts on the whole thing. Uh, kind of a caveat to all of this. I don't have anything in star stock. Uh, didn't put, didn't put any money in, didn't really transact in the platform. I looked at it a couple of times briefly, considered doing a review on it at some point, but I never got around to it. And to be honest, I never really had sufficient interest. I didn't really see it as being viable from my perspective, but that's why I never ended up touching on it. Otherwise I would have at least given it a look and looked at it for the channel, if nothing else. But I'll play a little clip it for you. Again, I do recommend you check out the thing in its entirety. I'll leave the link in the description as I mentioned, and uh, let's play this little clip and I'll talk to you about kind of where I think it became a little bit interesting. I understood why they decided to do this video and why he decided to come out and do this interview. But at the same time, it, it'll, be, it'll be interesting to see how people respond to it as we have a little bit more time to dig digest it. But here you go, let me play this clip for you. Are, are safe the company's nowhere close to going bankrupt like uh that that is uh not true at all um and no one should be worried about their cards our vault is fully operational we're shipping cards out today um we're shipping uh break cards out from new york here as well um so no one should should worry about their cards um and, and the safety of their cards and their and their funds as well if, if people would like their funds they can take out a withdrawal request and we'd be you know we'll be doing that um, at the same rate that we were doing it, you know, the past few weeks, the past couple of years, like if you if you uh, want your money withdrawn off the site, um, you know, we will we will take care of that, you know, the week that it comes in as as we always do. And so that that should not be a concern for um, for for any of our customers is, is the well being of their cards um, or their funds. I guess I'm going to follow that up a little bit. I, uh, I know that I, I'm in this boat. I sent some cards in through y'all to be graded back in February or March of last year. I can't remember now. And obviously, you know, we're at a year at it. It is what it is. It's not y'all's fault. It's PSA. You know, it's, it's their backlog. Um, for the PSA submissions sent through Starstock, has PSA, or excuse me, has Starstock paid PSA for those submissions? Um, we, like, I, I don't know exactly how our, our process works. Um, if they require you pay up front, then we do. Um, if if uh, you pay uh, on the back end, um, then that's what we'll, that, then that's what we've done as well. And so I'd have to talk to our team on on how we handle that process. But again, that should be no worried. I, I know the news that that was going through the hobby, um, mm -hmm. you know, the last couple of weeks, and and I saw some of the comments on Twitter and Instagram um, that uh, that implied that we might be in a similar scenario. Like we like we are are nowhere near being bankrupt or being out of money. Now I'm going to stop it here because like I said, the, I, I do encourage you if you are interested in the rest to go see the video itself, go watch it in its entirety and you'll be able to then get your own context and be able to decide for yourself how you feel about it as far as whether to you Scott was credible and whether the answers were satisfactory. I, I'll, I'll iterate a couple of things. So first, full credit to Dakota and Sports Card Anonymous for doing the for getting the interview and doing the interview and asking some good questions. I think he did a very good job, all things considered. Again, wasn't given a ton of time and a lot of time to offer a lot of questions and follow up. So all things considered, he did a very good job. Now, I will say, uh, I can't give Scott Greenberg too much flack here. Um, I'm not going to give him praise really, because a lot of folks are like, well, it's commendable that he went and spoke. It's like, no, he kind of had to. And, uh, like I said, I showed you a couple of snippets from the Twitter thread and he addressed, even in that brief clip that I played for you, a couple of moments, a couple, a minute or so there, uh, you got a couple of the idea that he kind of had to put out front and center, you know, the company isn't going bankrupt, you know, that's, you know, he has to kind of quash that immediately. And at the same time, you will get your things in due time. And then he outlines, you know, what some of the backlogs are as far as shipping is concerned. He kind of kind of tries to, you know, dissuade any concerns about the money being available. If you try to get refunds on the money that you have on the platform and all that, all things that honestly he should be doing, which makes a lot of sense. But that little snippet there um, kind of conveys a couple of things. Um, and I'm not blaming him for this, like I said, because I'm sure he's under a ton of pressure and he's trying to work out a lot of things. And the, the crux of his entire point was that they were restructuring. But here's a couple of elements where from an analysis standpoint, I would look at it. So number one, uh, they started as kind of a business model where they initially began the, the idea of building this marketplace. And as time has gone on, they pivoted, they included breaks. They've done this, that, and the other thing. The question became over time is they they initially got a bunch of seed money which i showed you that article from sports Co collectors daily and then additional seed money going forward to the tune of almost 10 million dollars now when you're trying to do all that and you have these ambitions of doing a mobile app and doing this and building up this marketplace and you got this vault and then you're doing breaks and then you're doing this that and the other thing it is very indicative of a company that's seeking it had an idea 
but then it got, you know, sports cars blew up. Uh, you know, there was a lot of things going on, you know, you become more ambitious, but at the same time, for whatever reason, they weren't finding themselves being as profitable as they wanted to be. Well, when you've got a bunch of venture capitalist investors, they're going to want to see some money when everything was going, you know, everything was exploding. You want to be able to see money. Hopefully you were making money during that time. It doesn't appear that that's the case because now the things slowed down a little bit. Well, now almost immediately you have to consider restructuring. You have to consider other things. And there's nothing wrong with that because if you know this is a startup, because that's what it is, it's a startup. But I do think that some people use the startup mentality of it to give them a little bit of a pass. Now, I can't blame Starstock for this because in reality, it, a lot of that becomes, uh, uh, the onus should be on the early adopters and folks that promoted the, you know, the Starstock model so quickly when they had no track record in the space. They had barely been around for very long and almost immediately it was like, um, it was it was free money for folks for a while because they were able to buy and flip and flip cards and doing all that. And it worked in certain ways for them. And it was understandable. That's the reason why I used that ComC analogy earlier. ComC, for all its problems and its foibles, and it had quite a number of them for quite a while there from mismanagement standpoint, they at least had a longer standing track record in the hobby. They were trying to do something even more ambitious in the, in the way they operate their vault type service and the type of things they were doing, which created some problems for them. But they've been able to kind of continuously chip away and work through it to the point that have they solved everything? No, certainly not. But would anyone question if ComC is stable? They wouldn't because it's still around. It's still doing its thing. It's still operating. If you wanted to do the flipping thing, though, in a lot of ways, ComC is a superior version of that model only because all the difficulties they created in order to do it make it a little bit more robust. It makes it more robust that they weren't necessarily relying on venture capital money. It meant that they could at least, whatever the vision is, uh, Tim Getch and those folks, they have an idea of where the vision is. Starstock, it appears, had a vision, but then maybe it wasn't proving to be profitable enough, so then they kind of pivoted their vision, and they kind of pivoted their vision again, and pivoted one more time, and they're still trying to figure out what that model is going to be that's going to be successful going forward. Uh, a startup could take years to become fully and properly uh, you know, profitable in the space, and they're not far enough along necessarily, but the problem is kind of in that little clip I showed you. The answer he gave, I don't think was wrong. I don't think he was trying to mislead. I don't think he was uh, saying anything inappropriate. But unfortunately, given that you, this, given that this is really the only thing other than a couple of tweets here and there and some replies here and there, this is kind of your first main, you know, discussion of what's going on from you being front facing and you're giving your perspective. Um, you probably want to make sure that whenever you get a question, uh, and Dakota's question was reasonable, it was fair, um, not. You might not know exactly what the situation is with the grading thing, but you acknowledged in your response that you knew that was a thing people were asking about. You knew that was a thing people were concerned with, but saying basically, and he literally said it, I don't know what our processes are is probably not the way I would have phrased it. I understood what he, meant, what he meant. He didn't know specifically the status of whether they were supposed to pay in advance or whether they were paying after the fact. Uh, it would have sufficed to say, I'll look into that for you, but I know that we have the, the money that's been put in for, for grading submission is an escrow. That's basically all that I think people actually wanted to hear. The money is available there. If PSA needs it and they invoice us, we'll pay them. And that's kind of what he kind of hinted to in the second half of that statement. If we, if they ask us to pay in advance, we do that. If they ask us to pay after, we do that, which is kind of what he said. But then he led with, uh, I don't know what our processes are. I'll have to ask him. Um, again, it's, it's how you present things. It, when you don't have much to go on and people haven't heard from you too much uh, in the current state, you know, previously they had heard from you when times were good, but now it's a little bit trickier now. Unfortunately, what it really comes down to, and this is maybe the key piece that I want to take away from this, it doesn't really matter what he would have said. It just comes up, it, the only thing that really would have mattered in this situation is does he come across as credible? And I leave that to you to decide that for yourself. Does he come across as trustworthy in the sense of the vision that's going to go forward, given that they've had to pivot? Um, it appears clear that they're still trying to seek out whatever that vision is going to be that's going to make them profitable long term. If they end up moving out of the vaulting business entirely, well, then that's fair enough. As long as he makes everyone whole, they get their money and they get their cards, you know, um, I'm sure they won't be thrilled at the anxiety that it creates for them for the, in the interim. But as long as they get their cards and their money back, I think they'll move on with their lives. What the, uh, the unfortunate part about this is that now it's in a state where even if they wanted to try to re-enter the space, it's going to be very difficult to do because once confidence is lost, and that's kind of the end of that, it's basically like, it's a, it's like a run on the bank, so to speak. People might, you know, you can assure everybody, Hey, look, everything's fine. The, the question that everybody's going to be asking in the back of their mind is if I take my time and try to t withdraw my funds or withdraw my cards later. Is the fund that you're going to be there? Is the money actually in escrow or has the money been moved around for operating expenses or whatever the case may be? You got this much seed money. Is there enough money left to pay back everybody who needs to get paid back? 
I don't know what the answer to that is. Uh, Scott Greenberg here has tried to assure everyone that that's fine. You know, he made it abundantly clear they're not on the verge of bankruptcy or not in danger of it in any way. That's what he said. We'll have to take him at his word to that degree. And you can disagree with it. That's fine. D you know, don't take it up with me. Take it up with Starstock. But the, I think the overarching point here and my thought on this is that from a PR standpoint, I can appreciate that he wanted to get out in front and at least say something and be seen and then let people at least hear from him. I don't know if um, if it's uh, for, if you know if I was kind of heading up his PR. I don't know if this would be the way that I would want to run it, unless you have definitive answers to certain questions, and you have to know some of the questions are coming. And I think the code asked very fair questions, uh, so I don't think he was unreasonable, and I don't think he gave him softballs either because he had to answer for some things. So I think I think it's a good balance. I think uh, this discussion was a good balance, and in the time they had, they were able to ask some of the questions that people had. Obviously, you're not going to satisfy everybody. You know, you're not going to get much. You're not going to be able to cover all that in 20 minutes. There's just no way. But all things considered, at least it gives us something to go on. And now you can decide for yourself. Uh, you do have the video now, and you can look at what Scott over there is doing and what there's what he's saying about what they're doing, and decide for yourself if it makes sense or not. That all said, like I mentioned earlier, all the the video and the links of everything are going to be in the description. I'll give you that. I'll even give you a link to the Twitter uh, Twitter thread that Starstock started, and then you can follow through with it if you want to go down that rabbit hole. You certainly can. Um, my initial thoughts on it are that I don't know if he came off as credible as he probably would have wanted to. I don't know if that's really going to make anybody more comfortable. If I was somebody that, that had stuff in Starstock, I know I wouldn't be more comfortable uh, after having listened to him explain it. I don't think he's misleading people necessarily. I think he, to a certain degree, believes what he's saying. Um, that doesn't mean that I would be confident enough to leave money on the platform. That doesn't mean I'd be confident enough to leave cards on the platform. It doesn't mean I'd freak out and panic because if enough people do, you're going to be stuck in a backlog and it's probably going to increase your anxiety. So I can't tell you what to do if you're in that situation. I really can't. Um, I'll say this. It's going to be interesting to see what happens next. Uh, more than likely, if I was to guess, if I take the if I take him at his word and assume that they have the liquidity to be able to get through and get everybody back their stuff and they do shut down the vaulting thing and move on to NFTs or whatever it's going to be, I don't know if they're ever going to be able to really make a go of it because NFTs in that space is already pretty crowded. There's already a lot of companies out there that have taken a lot of seed money and investment capital. And just entering into a space that's already pretty occupied, I don't know if there's going to be enough money in there for you to be able to take a stab at it, but certainly isn't our place to tell them not to try. That said, it'll be something we'll continue to monitor and follow through with it. I'd be interested in getting your comments and your take. If you get a chance, check out the video. It'll be in the description there. Check it out for yourself. And I'd like to get your take on it. How did you feel about it? How did Scott come off to you? Did uh, did his answer satisfy you? Or is it something where you're left with a lot of more questions than answers? I'll leave it with that. More videos to come on the channel. Uh, live stream is going to be on Friday, 9 p.m. Eastern time, like usual. And we'll talk about this or anything else that comes up uh, as we go through the rest of the week. See what the content gods provide us. Anyway, that's it for me this time around. Thanks very much. We'll catch you in the next one.